pleasure to welcome you to the public ceremonies of the 173rd Annual Communication of the Grand Lodge of California. The Grand Lodge was raised this morning by worshipful brother Howard A. Zilsdorf, the master of Benicia Lodge, number 877, using a gavel that I made for my daughter Grace when she was worthy advisor of Livermore Assembly, International Order of Rainbow for Girls in California. Brother Grand Marshal, you will retire, conduct to a place west of the altar, and introduce the youth leaders of our Masonic Youth Orders. Worshipful, I have the pleasure to present Miss Sydney Warning, Grand Worthy Advisor, International Order of Rainbow for Girls, California. Miss Dina Grissom, Grand Bethel Honor Queen, Job's Daughters International, California. Miss Natalie Lira, Miss California Job's Daughter, Job's Daughters International, California. Mr. Michael Cherry, Jurisdictional Master Counselor, Dimolay International, Northern California, and Mr. Chris Arnold, Jurisdictional Master Counselor, Dimolay International, Southern California. It is a special pleasure to welcome you to our annual communication. You are the future of Freemasonry. One day, you and your peers will be masters of our lodges, the worthy matrons and patrons of our Eastern Star chapters, and the leaders of our other Masonic organizations. Your participation, your leadership, and your influence are vital to the future success of our Son and family. Thank you for joining me today in the Grand Feast. Please rise. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, I'm getting in front of myself. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Please rise as the flag of our country is presented. 
presented by members of the International Order of Rainbow for Girls in California. join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kindly escort the flag to its proper place in the East. For the benefit of everyone in the audience and our various speakers today, kindly turn off your cell phones. As we begin our program this Sunday morning, let us turn our attention to our Grand Chaplain, the very Reverend Stephen H. DeMuth, for an inspirational message. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Most worshipful sir, past Grand Masters, fellow Grand Lodge officers, brethren and friends. Before I begin any important endeavor, I pause and pray. Actually, Masons are encouraged to do this from the beginning, right from the start. Before I write my Sunday sermon, I always pray, Lord, give me a word for your people. So when I begin thinking about what I wanted to say to you, I asked God to give me a good word to share. Whether I feel immediately inspired or move faith forward, I trust God will be God and work with me and help me be a blessing. So imagine my surprise 
when I uttered the words, asking God for a good word to share. And the next thing I see is a billboard that read, the quickest way to rise is to lift up another. I don't know about you, but this quote stayed with me. It sunk in my heart. As I sat ruminating, it rang true. While searching for the attribution, I came across a portion of the story of my life and work by Booker T. Washington. When I was a boy, said Washington, I used to like to fight. I used to like to get a boy down in the ditch and hold him there. But as I got older, I saw that I could not hold him down without staying down in the ditch myself. No nation can hold another down without staying down itself. Washington went on to say, I think I have learned that the best way to lift oneself up is to help someone else. This for me, sums up everything I love about Freemasonry. Our craft is open to men 18 years and older who believe in a supreme being and are found to be of good moral character. The purpose of Freemasonry is to make better men out of good men. Within each of the degrees of Masonry are moral and ethical teachings are expressed and beautifully illustrated in word and deed. Strangers become brothers, and the bonds that form are lasting. We are literally lifted up by one another, raised up, and taught the importance of brotherly love relief, and truth. Core to our existence are ritual of actual acts of welcome and inclusion and character building. We vouch for one another, only partly based upon reputation, but primarily based upon trust, even hope that those who are drawn to become better men will realize the value of symbolic masonry, the value of offering a helping hand in the darkness and an experienced guide along pathways unfamiliar. I am enamored by the word resurrection. In all of its reverberations with synonyms such as awakening, renewal, restoration, and revitalization. It is in resting and rising, sleeping and waking, that we learn to believe and trust in the great architect of the universe, who has filled creation itself with images that point us toward the mystery of life unending. We experience a type of resurrection every morning, or for me at least after my first cup of coffee, <laughs> every springtime, and every time someone gives us a helping hand. Yet I would like to suggest that the secret of Freemasonry, the handmaid of religious life, is that the quickest way to rise is to lift up another. This is similar to the axiom that it's better to receive than to give. No, it is better to give than receive because in giving we always receive. We receive the blessing of participating in the divine plan of caring for our brother and of following the golden rule. Likewise, it is 
in lifting up one who is down, weighed down by any myriad of weighty and wearying issues, a brother knows what to do. When I was raised, I did not fully comprehend the mystery at first. It took time and experience and learning to trust fraternal ties that convinced me of the value of what we do. For example, a rabbi once said that one who visits the sick takes away one sixtieth of their sickness. When we visit someone in need, we express sympathy and empathy. We let them know that people actually care about them because a person's physical state is often related to their internal emotional or mental state, a visit can improve a person's feelings in a way that literally makes things better. To make them feel better, lifting up their spirit, lifting them up off their couch. There is a song I've sung before that was made famous by Josh Groban, You Raise Me Up. I've always assumed that the lyrics were speaking about how God comes to us in our need and lifts us up, setting us on mountains, helping us maneuver life's stormy seas. But now, I believe that it also speaks about us and our responsibility as Masons and of this Masonic family. For those who have been raised up, who stand on the shoulders of those who have come before, we are raised up to more than we ever thought we could be. So as I sing this song, I invite you to think about those who have raised you up and helped form the person you are today. As you remember them in your heart with gratitude, Remember this, the quickest way to rise is to lift up another. <clears throat> more than I can. 
the positive impact you have all made while visiting our Bethels, supporting our fundraisers, and providing words of encouragement has shaped us into the organization and leaders we are today. Leaders like myself. Five years ago, I walked into the Bellflower Masonic Lodge and my life changed forever. When I was introduced to Job's Daughters, I was scared, shy, and nervous to talk to people I didn't know. Now, I have gained the confidence to speak in front of you all today. I, myself, was crafted into a leader. At the time, I did not know my own potential. With the guidance and empowerment of the leaders that came before me, I found my place. I found my voice, in which I can both be the change and continue to aid in crafting the leaders of our future. In my role as Miss California Job's daughter, I am your ambassador to our order. My goal is to ensure all California Masons have knowledge about Job's daughters, know where they can go to support their local Bethels, and generate enthusiasm about your daughters, granddaughters, sisters, and nieces joining our order. After the session, I would like to connect with each of you about the opportunities we get your lodge about Job's daughters. By promoting the welfare of each other's organizations, our Masonic family strengthens and grows. Thank you once again for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. I look forward to this next year and visiting with so many of you along the way. I would also like to invite you to our Grand Bethel in Ontario, June 29th to July 1st. Thank you. Mentors that we have from Masons and advisors like yourselves. 
In my six and a half years as a DMLA, I consider myself to be pretty successful, and I can show you my mentors. I've had the privilege of getting to meet amazing individuals from all over California, and some of them have made an impact on me, not only in my DMLA career, but my life. For instance, Dad Dave Kilmer, who has been a role model to me since I joined Roseville Chapter in 2016. Whether it be him saving lives as a firefighter, being an amazing father and husband to his family, or having hour-long conversations with in his car about my future, Dad Kilmer has always been there for me, and I am so thankful for him to be a mentor. Perhaps the most influential person in my life would be my father, Daniel Sherry. He is a member of Roseville Lodge number 222, and not has only been there for me for my 18 years of my life, but he has had such an impact on me in my DMLA life as well. He has helped me inside ritual, public speaking, and so much more. And outside, he's taught me to find things that I love, such as sports, racing, and setting my sights on becoming a California Highway Patrol Officer. All the members of Masonic Youth Orders and I are so lucky to be part of this wonder of the Sonic family. As I look around, I see hundreds, if not thousands, of, of Masons that can become advisors and mentors, and I can think of thousands of kids who can need them. So I challenge you to make an impact, no matter how big or small. Go to a chapter, Bethel, or assembly event, and you will see the opportunity to help someone in some way that may sit with them for the rest of their lives. Before I end my speech, I'd like to invite you all to Northern California to Malay's annual convention at the Hyatt Regency in Burlingame, California on November 25th to the 27th. This year we are celebrating our theme of uniting our kingdom by holding convention in Camelot. So join in on the fun and bring your best medieval costume for the Friday night banquet and costume contest. It has been an absolute honor and pleasure to speak to you all this morning. Thank you.
The memorial stands as a place of quiet reflection as it honors those who were killed, those who survived, and those whose lives changed forever after the attack. While the memorial alone is striking, one of the most impactful things to me was a large, almost 100-year-old American elm tree, which stands in the rescuer's orchard. This tree, known as the survivor tree, bore witness to the violence that took place that day and withstood the full force of the attack. The tree's survival was questioned by many, as its trunk and branches were weakened by the explosion and littered with debris and evidence. The tree easily could have fallen victim to the attack, but despite everything it had faced, it survived. Its roots and its 100 years of history held it in place. Not only did the tree survive, it grew and became a symbol of hope and resilience around the world because like the people of Oklahoma City, supported by both the local and global community, it withstood what most thought would break it. Resilience is crucial in keeping organizations like ours standing for years to come. Our roots and the values and memories associated with them have held strong thus far because our members and the community that supports them believe in the value and worth they hold. In order to keep our Masonic family strong, we need to go back to our roots and refocus on why we are here today. What is it that makes you love your organization so much? What is it that keeps you coming back year after year, event after event? For me, Rainbow has always been my second family a place where I am constantly surrounded by people like me who have a passion for giving back and learning how to grow as leaders together so we can make a difference in the world. We are bonded in sisterhood and service, and it is this community and family that make us so special. These are the unique qualities that will help us continue to stay resilient over the next 100 years. It is up to us to build the future we want for our organizations. The survivor tree never would have remained standing if it weren't for the people who believed in its value and the importance and history it held within its branches. Like the tree, our organization isn't <coughs> able to thrive without support from people like you. If you believe in the value and potential that Rainbow has in developing the girls of America, please stand.
would cause all others to lose hope. The sisterhood our organization provides would be lost, and there would be entire communities of girls who would never get to experience the impact that being a rainbow girl would have on their future lives. We need to work now to preserve rainbow not just for ourselves, but for the generations of young women that will come after us. To those of you who stayed seated after the second question I asked, those who have never attended a rainbow function, now is your time to stand with California Rainbow. There are over 330 Masonic Lodges in California. 13 of those reside here in San Francisco. We are asking for your help. If each Masonic Lodge introduced just one new member to Rainbow, reached out to a current member to encourage her to stay involved, or had one of your members serve as an advisor, the impact could be the difference in our survival. If you stopped by the Rainbow booth during these past couple of days, did you see the listing of all of the assemblies in California? I encourage you to reach out and volunteer in some way so you can make an impact on the assemblies in your area. Assemblies across the state are hosting membership events, fundraisers, and canned food drives. Make a pledge to support us and help us grow, especially for those of you who live here in San Francisco. San Francisco Assembly number one is our survival tree, but it is only the beginning. With your support, its success can serve as an inspiration for growth and rebirth across California Rainbow. Be the difference for California Rainbow. Take a stand and you too will be a part of our family, our history, our survival. Thank you again, Most Worshipful Grand Master Wilkins, for inviting me to speak today. We hope to see as many of you as possible at our Broadway bound, a glittering marquee in 2023 Grand Assembly Sessions, which will be held in Visalia, California from April 1st through the 4th. Thank you. since I was four years old, thanks to my sisters being in Joan's Daughters. I joined Imola over five years ago, and these past years have been the most beneficial years of my life. I've made incredible memories, formed unbreakable friendships, and I have gained invaluable life skills. None of this wouldn't have been possible without the guidance and support from my advisors and the Macy's. They helped shape me into the man who was able to speak before you today. In a real sense, they were crafting leadership in me. This concept of crafting leadership 
is what Masonry does for its members. And crafting leadership is what Dad Land had in mind when he helped create the Order of Evil Light. He understood the importance and impact that Masons could have on the youth in guiding them and working with them and helping them achieve their goals. Dad Land also understood that it would take a team of advisors to guide both the members of and the chapter to success. As I look back on the advisors that helped me, I realized that it was a team effort on their part. Not only the chapter dads who mentored the officers, but also the advisors who did their part in supervising the chapters and its activities. Dad Land had a vision, a dream, of helping boys become better men. Masonry has the mission, the dream, of making good men better. And I have a dream of crafting leadership in Demolay and growing our membership. It will take teamwork to make the dream work. And that is our theme this year. Teamwork makes the Demolay dream work. Together, we can achieve these dreams. We ask for your support by visiting a chapter, attending a chapter activity, or by becoming an advisor. We look to you, the Masons of California, to help us by crafting leadership in the DMLA. And together, our teamwork will make the dream work of all the Sonic bodies. Thank you. play a vital role in the success of our youth orders. Each year, the Grand Master has the privilege to present one or more Masons with the prestigious Grand Master's Youth Support Award. This award recognizes singular service to our young men and women in our Masonic Youth Orders. This year, Four brothers have been selected to receive the award. Most worshipful brother Russell E. Charbonia, the chairman of the Youth Orders Committee, will assist me with this presentation by introducing and later reading a brief biography of each recipient. The recipients will gather at the foot of the steps in the West as our chairman announces your name. Thank you, Most Worshipful. And my gift to all of you is I will not sing to you as our <laughs> At this time, I will read the names of the brothers who have been selected to receive the Grand Masters Youth Support Award. Brother Simon I. Dias, a member of the Grand Master's Lodge. Worshipful Brother Thomas A. Stee, a past master of Arinda Lodge number 122. Brother Gary L. Rica Frente, a member of General Douglas MacArthur Lodge number 853. And Brother Donald H. Peterson, Jr., a member of Orange Grove Lodge, number 293. Brother Grand Marshal. With the assistance of the four leaders of our Masonic Youth Orders, conduct these brethren to a place west of the altar.
I congratulate you on receiving the Grand Masters Youth Support Award. We often state that members of our Masonic Youth Orders are the future of our fraternity and of the world. Future leaders need the support and guidance of adult mentors. Like you, they're only able to do that with you to achieve their potential. There is no award or gift of any material value that can equal the good work that you have done for our youth. But accept this award as a token of our esteem for you. For the Grand Marshal, assist our brethren in facing west so that the audience may see them. Steve has also helped launch the 
Lamarinda Chapter de Malay. Through his skills, hard work, and dedication, Tom has left a proud legacy for future generations to follow. Our third recipient is Gary L. Ricofrente. Through good times and bad, Gary Ricofrente has been a champion for DMLA in his community. As a member of General Douglas MacArthur No. 853 and Valley No. 135, he has served in several Lodge officers' positions, but it is his work with the local DMLA chapter, chapter that has been transformational. Brother Rica Frente was among the charter members of the chapter's first advisory council and served as its first chapter advisor. For that, he was awarded the Sir Weld Key by the organization. In 2015, he assumed the role of chairman of the advisory council, a position he continues to hold. In 2020, the pandemic forced the chapter that he helped found into an existential crisis. Through his unwavering leadership, Gary helped steady the chapter and work with new advisors to rebuild its membership. In 2022, the chapter has grown significant, significantly, adding 13 new members, with several more prospects petitioning for membership. For that, Demolay has recognized his devotion with the Youth Order by investing him with the Cross of Honor for service as an adult advisor. Our fourth recipient is Donald H. Peterson, Jr. Through his dedication, enthusiasm, and service to Dean Malay, Don Peterson has been an inspiration to a generation of young people. Brother Peterson, a longtime member of Orange Grove Lodge number 293, is currently the executive officer for the Southern California jurisdiction of Dean Malay, as well as an active member of the Supreme Council of Dean Malay International. For over 25 years, he has served in several roles for the organization at the chapter, league, jurisdiction, and international level. He was first initiated into the Yorba Linda chapter of Dean Lay in 1981. As an adult leader, he has served on the planning committee for the Dean Lay International Convention and for many years was responsible for the planning, management, and leadership of the jurisdiction's grand banquet. During that time, he helped transition the event from a five-hour five -hour marathon into a two-and-a-half-hour celebration. <laughs> For all his management skills, Brother Peterson is happiest when working directly with the youth members due in large part to his mentorship. Three of his past jurisdiction master counselors have gone on to represent, to become international master counselors or Congress secretaries. He was even asked to officiate the wedding of a past jurisdiction master counselor and past princess. <coughs> Among Don's many honors are the Founders Membership Award and the Guild of the Leather Apron as advisor of the year. He has been award awarded both the degree of Chevalier and the Legion of Honor, the organization's highest honors. Presenting the Grand Masters Youth Support Award to these distinguished brethren.
Masons will rise. Brethren, join me in giving these distinguished Masons the public grand honors of Masonry by the battery of three times three. Together, brethren. I now have the pleasure to recognize the Masons who will receive the Grand Masters Mason of the Year Awards. Annually, inspectors make nominations of members in their districts who make a profound difference through their service to our craft. These nominations are provided to the assistant Grand Lecturers who review each nominee on their merits and make a recommendation of one brother from their division. The Grand Master then reviews these nine distinguished brothers' nominations and chooses two, one from Northern California and one from Southern California to recognize for their dedication to service. At this time, our Grand Secretary will read the names of the brothers who have been selected to receive the Grand Master's Mason of the Year Award. Thank you, Most Worshipful. The 2022 recipients of the Grand Master's Mason of the Year Award are Worshipful Brother Arthur A. Pasquinelli of Golden Rule Lodge, number 479, and Brother Gerald S. Beller of Fox Coates Daylight Lodge, number 842, who was unable to join us this morning. Brother Grand Marshal. Conduct our brother to a place west of the altar. My brother, I congratulate you on receiving the Grand Master's Mason of the Year Award. This award recognizes not only your past accomplishments in the fraternity, but it is an indication that we look forward to your continued service to our beloved craft. Brother Grand Marshal, Assist our brother in facing west so that the audience may see him.
that she's reading the Bible. <laughs> Worshipful brother Arthur A. Pasquinelli. They call Art Pasquinelli the maker of Masons, yeah. and for good reason. Since he was first initiated into Freemasonry in 1968, he has been a trusted advisor and mentor to generations of Masons. A past master of Golden Rule Lodge number 479 in 1976, he has also served as officer's coach since 2009 and was twice a Grand Lodge inspector in his district. In 1990, Worshipful Brother Pasquinelli was given the Hiram Award in recognition of his lifelong work on behalf of his lodge. And in the 32 years since then, he's only continued to be of service. Brother Pasquinelli's importance to the lodge transcends titles or awards, however. Instead, it's embodied in his willingness to pitch in, no matter how small or large the need. He often helps other lodges in his area as a coach, or in performing in a degree, or even painting the walls. Just recently, he helped the San Jose Masonic Center rewire its lights. That spirit extends to his work with the Santa Clara Masonic Officers Association, which he has served through numerous committees, including fundraising for several events. He often assists the district inspectors of the South Bay Officers School of Instruction events. More than that, though, he is always available and ready to lend his hand or his ear he lends his counsel and advice freely and is always there to serve as a sounding board. In addition to his work with his lodge, Worshipful Brother Pasquinelli has also been a devoted member of the Scottish Rite bodies, serving in several leadership positions. In 2018, he was recognized by a large gathering of Masonic leaders for his 50 years in masonry. However, his true legacy is seen in the countless masons of the South Bay who have, over the many years, benefited from his vast knowledge and close friendship. Brother Gerald S. Beller, who could not be with us today, all Masons take an obligation to care for and serve their brothers and families in times of need. Few Masons have put this promise more clearly into action than Jerry Beller. Brother Beller was initiated into Freemasonry in 1958 in Highland, number 748, and raised the following year. In 2004, he affiliated with Fox Coats Daylight, number 842, which he served for many years as chaplain. He is also a member of the Al Malika Shrine and the Scottish Rite. Since 2021, he has been a licensed Masonic funeral master, performing the sacred ritual with the required reverence at more than a hundred Masonic services. In 2007, Brother Beller was recognized with the Hiram Award. In 2009, he received the Golden Veterans Award for 50 years in Masonry. Now, at age 87, he has been in Masonry for more than 63 years. It isn't just his longevity that marks him as a leader among Masons. Rather, it's his ongoing efforts to provide and care for others that stands as a testament to his belief in Masonic principles. Brother Beller devotes much of his time to caring for elderly and distressed members of the Lodge and their widows. He drives them to doctor's appointments, he takes them shopping, he brings them food, he maintains 
an extensive list of lodge members and widows who he calls regularly, sometimes several times a week, to check in on them. He keeps a stockpile of medical equipment, including wheelchairs, canes, and walkers that he lends to anyone in need. Brother Beller does this work without any thought of recognition or reward, and yet his example speaks volumes and serves as an inspiration to us all. Assist me in presenting the Grand Master's Mason of the Year Award to this distinguished brother. Mason, the public brand honors of masonry by the battery of three times three. Together, brethren. Represent the Masons of California, as I represent the Masonic family of California, I am but a representation. You here today, for those who could not make it, all of the brothers and sisters in Masonic family within California, I am so proud to represent because you have demonstrated what crafting leadership is all about. I could not imagine doing this 
without the core of Grand Lodge officers, I have been privileged and blessed to serve with this year. They have raised me up and raised each of us up together, growing as a family. And for my family that is here, for Mosaic Lodge number 218, Semper Fidelis chapter number 135, and Livermore Assembly number 246, you are my Masaka family. Thank you for being that start. And thank you all here today for being part of a wonderful closure for our 173rd annual communication of the Grand Lodge of California. And as I finish and think about this time this year, I don't think about the past, but I look behind me, not to the past, but to the future that sits here the leaders of our Masonic family. And I look forward to what you do in the future as you grow our Masonic family. Soak in for a moment. This is nuts. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you all. This has been an honor to serve you. This concludes this portion of the public ceremonies. There will be a very brief <clears throat> interlude, followed by the installation of the 2023. Grand Lodge officers. I ask that the audience to remain in your seats. If you leave, be sure to return before 11 o'clock, as that is when the installation will begin promptly at that time. <coughs> I will give two wraps for the Grand Lodge officers who will stand and retire from the auditorium for the final time. And I've got one last thank you because I just want to thank Liz and all of the spouses and partners for being here with us. <laughs> <laughs>